from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, March the 3rd, 2020. We open, of course, with the results from yesterday's national elections in Israel, with now some 92% of the votes counted, which do not include absentee ballots from IDF soldiers, prisoners, and diplomats. Those will only be tallied later tonight, and the votes that were cast by those quarantined due to possible exposure to the coronavirus will be counted tomorrow morning in Israel. With that in mind, here are the updated preliminary results from the elections as of the time of the taping of this newscast. Likud is projected to have 36 seats, blue and white, with 32. The joint Arab list with 15 seats, Shas with 10, United Torah Judaism with seven, Yisrael Beitenu with seven, and Labor Gesher Meretz with seven, Yamina with six seats. Looking at potential blocks to form a coalition, the right religious block would now have a total of 59 seats. That total is without Yisrael Beitenu. Late last night, the Prime Minister declared victory, calling the vote a historic one. Now, it of course remains to be seen whether Netanyahu can form a government. Blue and White Party leader Benny Gantz told the press this morning that he respects the Israeli voter, but noted that Netanyahu does not have the 61-seat majority needed to form a government. Israel's President Reuven Rivlin's office said he will only begin consultation with the various parties after he has received the official results from the Central Elections Committee next Tuesday. Turning now to the APEC National Policy Conference, the annual gathering of the pro-Israel lobby in Washington, which is concluding today. Democratic presidential hopeful Mike Bloomberg addressed APEC yesterday and responded to fellow candidate Bernie Sanders' decision not to attend the conference. Unfortunately, not all of my fellow Democrats in this race have attended an APAC conference. One of them, Senator Sanders, has spent 30 years boycotting this event. And as you've heard by now, he called APAC a racist platform. Well, let me tell you, he's dead wrong. This is a gathering of 20,000 Israel supporters of every religious denomination, ethnicity, faith, color, sexual identity, and political party. Calling it a racist platform is an attempt dis to discredit those voices, intimidate people from coming here, and weaken the U.S.-Israel relationship. The reality is, APAC doesn't fuel hatred. APAC works to combat it and the violence that it can produce. Bloomberg also said he would never condition aid to Israel, no matter what government is in power. Former Vice President Joe Biden addressed AIPAC via video conference, sharing what he said both the Palestinians and Israelis needed to do to bring peace closer. Palestinians need to eradicate incitement on the West Bank, eradicate it. They need to end the rocket attacks from Gaza, stop it. They need to accept once and for all the reality and the right of a secure, democratic and Jewish state of Israel in the Middle East. You know, and Israel, I think, has to stop the threats of annexation and settlement activity. We can't let Israel become another issue that defies Republicans and Democrats and the major parties. We can't let anything undermine the partnership that has grown and flourished from the moment of Israel's founding. Biden said the task ahead for Israel was hard but not impossible and that he believes in Israel's optimism. Israeli troops yesterday responded to an attempted attack in northern Israel. The IDF spokesperson said IDF forces identified an attempted sniper attack in the northern Golan Heights and acted to thwart it, striking the vehicle involved in the attempt. A Jewish man said he was attacked on a street in Brazil last week. The 57-year-old victim, who was wearing a kippah, said he was held down by three assailants who yelled anti-Semitic slurs, broke his teeth, and tore his kippah off with a pocket knife in Jaguariuna. Local police are investigating the assault as a hate crime. The Sao Paulo Jewish Federation, who has been helping the victim, called the attack a serious act of anti-Semitism and racism that we will not tolerate in our society. They said we are working to elucidate this case and make it exemplary in the fight against discrimination, racism, and anti-Semitism. 
Well, actor, writer, host, and producer James Lipton has died. Lipton was most known as the host of Inside the Actors Studio on the Bravo Network, where he interviewed hundreds of accomplished actors. He also wrote and executive produced the show. Lipton also did a good deal of acting himself, performing on Broadway and in film and television. He formed the Actors Studio Drama School at the New School in New York City and then at Pace University and remained its Dean Emeritus. Lipton died yesterday at the age of 93. The Vatican unsealed its archive on Pope Pius XII, who was pontiff during the Holocaust and has been accused of staying silent about the atrocities. While the Vatican has maintained, the Pope worked behind the scenes to save Jews. Jewish organizations welcomed the opening of the secret archives, access to which has already been granted to researchers from around the world, including from the U.S. and Israel. The American Jewish Committee's International Director of Interreligious Affairs, Rabbi David Rosen, said we trust that the independent scholarly review of these archival materials will provide greater clarity as to what positions and steps were taken during this period by the Holy See and help resolve the persistent debates and controversy in this regard. Rosen said such necessary transparency is also to the credit of the Church and will further enhance the mutual trust and excellent relations between the Catholic Church and the Jewish community built up over the last 55 years. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, March the 3rd at 7 o'clock, a discussion on the defense of Israel. And then we hear from Peter Beinert, who speaks about his criticism of the U.S. peace plan with Jody Rudorin. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with retired British Colonel Richard Kemp. At 10, Mike Burston talks about his film Azimuth. And coming up right after this newscast, Mark Golub speaks to The Times of Israel's Haviv Retegur about the latest election results. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, March the 3rd, 2020. I'm Tisha Bader.